Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Good morning, you guys. Oh, Sadie wants to say hi. Good morning, you guys. It is snowing outside right now. It's really, really cool, actually, and really beautiful. But anyways, for those who are new, my name is Jess. I post videos every single Monday revolving around health, wellness, lifestyle, all that fun stuff. Wanted to get a little vlog started get the day going it's a tuesday i'm really really excited i'm gonna take you guys with me to the gym currently i'm in a hotel if you guys can't tell living out in syracuse right now has been a little bit unique the gym doesn't have a ton of stuff but it has enough and so we're still gonna jump in today's video what we're gonna do in today's video is go over some form and technique as well as some major components in lifting that are gonna help you to skyrocket results build muscle a little bit faster and more effectively a lot of times I find that people are spending hours in the gym days in the gym doing exercises but not doing them properly and having the most effective way and so then they aren't seeing results as fast my goal is to help you to create the most effective workout so you see results faster and reach your goals faster with that being said if you guys haven't already don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel videos do come out every single monday and i don't want to miss you guys in a future video let's jump into some key concepts let's jump into some form let's get you guys seeing your results quicker in today's vlog just to start it off there are six major motions within weightlifting and pretty much every single exercise crazy amount of exercises comes from these six motions so let's lay them out we got squats we got lunges hinge motions push motions pull motions and rotational motions within those there are so so many exercises you can do but if you can find how to nail down those basic movements and form and those movement patterns you are going to excel and find yourself really really thriving and making more out of your workout for instance a lot of times when i teach people lunges lunges tend to only work a lot of people's quads but there is a way you can get that booty involved and i know my girls they want to grow the booty so if you can do a lunge and really nail both your quads and your glutes I'm just gonna leave it at that. We're gonna go over those movements, how you properly do them, and then share a few key concepts within your weightlifting that are gonna make you guys thrive. Let's get the day started. I've been sitting for about an hour you guys saw I was doing some work on my computer sending out some emails to some clients you guys didn't know I am a personal trainer I train in both the gym but I also do online clients if you're interested reach out email will be in the description box below and I can just send you guys some info you don't have to commit to anything but anyways sending out emails I'm also applying to a program I'm very very excited about um, they have a bunch of like essay questions you have to answer so I'm making like a rough draft of answering my essay questions um, doing some work like that but since I've been sitting, I'm kind of like, want to get up. Does anyone else get like that? Where it's like, you've been sitting for a little bit while. And I feel like I've been staring at my screen for a little while. And my eyes are just like done. So I kind of want to take Sadie for a walk. I could also tell she has energy. But like I said, it was snowing. So I'm like, should I do it, guys? Should I go out and bundle up and just say, whatever? I think I might. I think I might throw on like two coats and just like muster up and see what happens. But I think it's going to be. And then we'll come back do a little bit more work and then be able to like actually go to the gym i don't know anyways i think i will have for a walk but before we do i want to share with you guys the first concept that is going to be super duper helpful within your weightlifting and that is having good mind to muscle connection to me sometimes this sounds a little bit funky it's really just a fancy way of saying being conscious of what muscles you are using and so i like to give the example of a bicep curl simple bicep curl we're thinking about contracting our bicep bringing up our dumbbell when you have really good mind and muscle connection you're able to consciously think about using your bicep to do this motion you want to think about when you fatigue a lot of times when we start to fatigue is when we lose our mind to muscle connection so what i'm saying is my bicep is getting so tired and i'm on rep eight and all of a sudden my shoulder forearm 
my side, we start jumping in and doing a little bit of a different movement. And all of a sudden we, we stop having the contraction in our bicep and we start using a bunch of muscles within our arm. It's super normal. Your body wants to jump in and give you help. It's like, hey, I'm tired. I'm gonna use all these other muscles I have. But it's so important to have good mind and muscle connection. Remain focused and have that conscious effort of no matter how tired this bicep gets, this is the muscle doing the work. You fatigue that muscle like crazy and your muscles are gonna grow a lot faster. I know there's a lot to say, but basically having good mind muscle connection, meaning being conscious of what muscles you're using, especially as our body starts to fatigue, will allow you to really fatigue your muscles even more. It's going to allow them to get stronger even quicker. All right, guys, now we are gonna bundle up. Wish me luck. I'm gonna go outside. We'll see if we can last for like 20 minutes. We shall see. We're back. We're back from the walk. I lasted a solid 15 minutes and I'm very cold. So I picked up a little coffee. We're gonna warm up a little bit and then we are gonna go to the gym. We're gonna go through those six basic movements of weightlifting. Teach you guys all you guys need to know to perform these properly so you aren't getting hurt, one, but two, so you're getting the most out of your workouts and you guys have quality, quality reps. So let's warm up a little bit and then we'll go to the gym and go over those exercises. Date, I'm still cold. So I'm hoping these workouts are gonna actually like warm me up. That's the plan. Let's head down to this little gym. You guys have seen it before. There's not a whole lot going in there, but it's gonna be plenty of room for us to go over our exercises. Let's go. Move and groove, people. Move and groove. All right, guys, we are setting up for what we call a goblet squat, which is a squat variation. Let's go over our squat motion. So to begin, I have my dumbbell up at my chest. You can also perform this with a kettlebell. I'm going to think about pushing my hips back and down like I'm sitting down in a chair. I want to remain with my knees in line with my toes and my feet flat on the ground. You're gonna think about driving your weight through your feet and keeping a flat surface. My knees are also creating what we call abduction. As you can see, they are never coming in. We don't want those knees to come towards each other. This is gonna keep your glutes engaged and protect your knees. As you can see, we want to reach 90 degrees in our squat. I'm doing a nice slow and controlled motion, driving my hips back, hitting 90, and then bringing my body back up. This is how you perform a squat. Our second movement of the day is a lunge, and today we are performing a dumbbell forward lunge. There's a bunch of lunge variations, but your body's all gonna move in the same motion. When doing a lunge, you wanna think about your front foot remaining flat on the ground with your knee in line with that toe, similarly to the squat. Our back heel can rise. As I'm coming down, I'm having a slight forward lean with my upper body. This doesn't mean my posture is giving in. I still have my core engaged and my back in line, but this is going to get our glute engaged. I'm thinking about working that front leg and driving my weight up off of that front leg to fatigue the right one at this moment. When performing your reverse lunge, it is quite the same with my body motion, but my body is gonna move oppositely. Stepping back, I'm currently fatiguing my right leg, keeping my knees and hips in line, driving off of my right leg. Again, my front foot is gonna remain flat and my knee is gonna remain in line with my toe. Same goes for the other side. You never want the knees to come in, never want the hips to come in, and we want to keep our core tucked in nice and tight to protect our back. Moving on to the hinge motion, I'm gonna be demonstrating a dumbbell RDL, Romanian deadlift. These are designed to work your glutes and your hamstrings. It's very important to keep your core tucked in and upper body very neutral so you do not have back pain in this motion. I'm thinking about my hips being the hinge, almost like a door hinge. So I'm thinking about pushing my hips as far back as possible, creating a strain, a stretch, or a pull on my hamstring muscles. From the side, you can see a little bit better that I have soft knees 
but I'm thinking about pushing my hips back while my upper body remains straight as well as my knees remaining soft but not bent like a squat and not straight. Now we're going to be performing a dumbbell bent over row. This exercise is a pull motion. We're thinking about squeezing my shoulder blades together, driving my elbows straight back. In this bent over position, I'm creating a similar position as I did with my RDL, but I'm keeping my shoulders relaxed away from my ears, driving back my dumbbells to engage my latissimus dorsi or my lats, the big old muscles on my back. What's important in a pull motion is to really focus on the muscles you are using and have good mind to muscle connection. Moving on to our push motion, which is designed to work your shoulders, chest, and triceps predominantly. We are doing a shoulder press in this workout, but I'm really thinking about having my core engaged and having a slight posterior pelvic tilt to protect my back, pushing my dumbbells up just like the motion says, really thinking about working my shoulders in this exercise. Our sixth and final motion is the rotational motion. A lot of times these are designed to work your obliques or at the side of your core as we know them. I'm doing a classic Russian twist. Really thinking about activating my obliques and my sides. Again, this is a motion that you're going to want to remain focused on the muscles you want to use. Otherwise, you will not get as much out of the workout. We're back. We're back and better than ever. So I should have said this earlier, but basically I want this month to be a little bit of like a beginner's guide, a starter kit, get you guys going for the new year. So a lot of times people have got off their fitness journeys, especially in the month of December, or you haven't started and your new year's resolution in January is to get fit. Whatever it may be, as we're approaching the new year, I wanna give you guys a little kit, a beginner's guide to get you going, started on your fitness journey, how you guys are going to see the most progress in the gym and in your health overall. As you guys know, last week's video was all about how to have confidence in the gym. This is gonna be the first step in getting yourself there. So if you guys haven't watched that, go check it out. But this week we went over the basic movements. I didn't show you guys full compound movements and how to perform those quite yet, but we went over the basic movements in basic form and we're going over some simple concepts within weightlifting that are gonna really, really help you to have results. Next week, I'm gonna show you guys some actual compound movements. We're gonna show an actual like back squat with a barbell on our back. We're gonna look at an actual bench press using a barbell as well. Things like that that are gonna be those key lifts that you're gonna to wanna to do week in and week out to really have progress. So like I said, I just wanna get you the basics. I hope that was helpful to have a little bit idea of how our bodies should move within the six basic movements of weightlifting. So that being said, I'm gonna prep some lunch for me and Rodney um, in this hotel kitchen. It's very small, so it's gonna be really interesting. So I'm giving myself ample time so I don't have to hurry and make a mess and I don't feel rushed. So I'm just gonna cook. It's gonna be enjoyable. And then we're gonna share a few more concepts that you guys are gonna use as you guys get going on your fitness journey. So good. Anyways, so I told you guys I was gonna make lunch. I did. We made rice, beans, with a little steak and chicken. Actually, it was quite a lot. We made like our own variation, like a chipotle bowl. So it was rice and beans, steak and chicken, and then we had spinach, avocado, and a little bit of the G Hughes sauce. But I haven't ate mine yet. So basically, Rodney came home, ate his. As you guys see, I'm eating a bagel with banana and peanut butter right now. Yes, you can eat bagels. You can do it. I really like having carbs pre-workout. It makes me feel very fueled for my workout. I know I showed you guys those exercises, but I'm still actually headed to the gym after this. So for my eating plan, I'm going to eat this little like pre-workout meal. Then I'll have my lunch post-workout that has plenty of protein in it. 
so I haven't ate that yet, but I wanted to share with you guys another concept within your weightlifting that is called progressive overload. So progressive overload is basically putting more load on your body week in and week out. This could look like lifting heavier weights, having more volume, so on and so forth. There's multiple ways you can do it. To me, the easiest way to track that you are putting more load on your body is by lifting heavier. So basically, let's say you do those bicep curls we kind of talked about earlier and you grab a 10 pounder and you do it and you do 10 reps and then next week you are like yeah i can do 10 reps of a 10 pound bicep curl so you do that again and then next week you do it again you're never pushing your body you're not going to see progress it is so important we constantly put more load on our muscles every week so that way they can actually grow so push yourself if you did 10 reps and you're not even that tired at the end that usually means you need to go up and wait. So try those 15, whatever it may be, but put more load on your body. This is the key to getting stronger. So I'm gonna fuel up. We're gonna go get a workout in. And I have a client to train this afternoon too. And then I will check in with you guys later. You guys, it has been a while since I last talked to you, not gonna lie. I told you guys this was gonna work out. I did hit a chest and triceps day and then I trained a client ended up picking up Rodney, we came home, I jumped on a call with the client that I have for online, and now I'm cooking some dinner. You can see the asparagus cooking in the background. I just wanted to wrap up this vlog. I hope you guys got some good advice, good tips on how to have proper form within some basic weightlifting movements. And then stay tuned for next week's video because we'll go over actual compound movements that are gonna be game changers that are gonna be the really, really important lifts. If you guys are looking for anything in the realm of getting stronger, losing weight, anything like that, these are gonna be the lifts that you guys want to do. Okay, I have loved hanging out with you guys. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel because videos do come out every Monday and this series is gonna be awesome for you going into January. So don't forget to stay tuned. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.